Hola amigos, I'm Joshua Oro, the Mustang Prince, and welcome to Mustang Prince Oral Reports. You know, I realized that I haven't blogged a movie for Cinco de Mayo for a long, long time. I mean, the previous movies that I looked at for that event were Blue Sky's Ferdinand from 2018 and Disney's The Three Caballeros back in 2015. However, for this year's Cinco de Mayo blog, I feel in the mood to look at an underrated movie from the old hand-drawn animation era of DreamWorks Animation. Back then, there were films like The Prince of Egypt, Spirit Stallion at the Cimarron, and of course Sinbad Legend of the Seven Seas, all of which I've already blogged. But you may be asking, does today's movie still hold up these days? Well, let's take a look and find out. Released on March 31st, 2000, the movie is The Road to El Dorado. Now, on for the plot of the movie. In 1517, Spanish wanted street swindlers Miguel and Tulio's uncanny luck gets them a map to El Dorado and a stowaway passage Albet in Cortez's stock destined for floggings and slavery in Cuba. They, along with a war horse named Altivo, escape, and they get washed up onto a Mexican shore and follow the map to the ancient city where they are worshipped by the natives as gods for their foreign appearances. Of course, there are some obstacles. A high priest is locked in for a power struggle with the benevolent chief, and the perfunctory girlfriend puts the two friends at odds. But in the end, they must make a huge moral decision that leads to a swashbuckling conclusion. Now, what are my thoughts on this movie? Well, to be quite honest, guys, compared to the other hand-drawn animated DreamWorks movies that I previously looked at, I haven't seen this one in about 20 years. But after recently watching it again on DVD, I think it's an underrated film, but it's not one of my favorites in DreamWorks' library. Also, I heard that the movie was unable to recoup with its $95 million budget. In other words, it became a box office bomb in theaters. But now, let's move on to Mustang Notes. Shortly before the public announcement of DreamWorks SKG in October 1994, former Disney chairman Jeffrey Katzenberg met with screenwriters Ted Elliott and Terry Rosio and gave them a copy of Hugh Thomas's book Conquest Montezuma Cortez and the Fall of Old Mexico, desiring to make an animated film set in the Age of Discovery. By the spring of 1995, Elliot and Rosio devised a story treatment inspired by the Bob Hope and Bing Crosby Road to films, with self-interested comedic anti-heroes who had set out to find the lost city of gold after acquiring a map to its location. Will Finn and David Silverman were originally the film's directors, with a tentative release scheduled for fall 1999. Originally, the story was conceived as a dramatic film due to Katzenberg's pension for large-scale animated films, which conflicted with the film's lighthearted elements. However, while The Prince of Egypt was in production, Katzenberg decided that their next animated project should be a departure from its serious adult approach and desire for the film to be an adventure comedy. Because of this, the film was put on hold where it was jokingly referred to as El Dorado, the Lost City, on hold due to several rewrites. In 1998, Finn and Silverman left the project following disputes over the film's creative direction and were then replaced by Bebo Bergeron and Don Paul. Early into production, a team of designers, animators, producers, and Katzenberg embarked on research trips to Mexico, where they studied ancient Mayan cities of Tulum, Chichen Itza, and Uxmal in hopes of making the film's architecture look authentic. By January 1997, 100 animators were assigned onto the project. 
However, because the animation department was occupied with the Prince of Egypt, the studio devoted more animators and resources on that film than on Road to El Dorado. Additional fine line animation was outsourced to Stardust Pictures in London and Bardell Entertainment in Vancouver. Like I said earlier, it's been about 20 years since I last saw this movie, so there's not too much I want to talk about for this blog. However, I think DreamWorks style hand-drawn animation for this movie looks really gorgeous. Not just for El Dorado, but also for Spain. Plus, while the story may seem pretty predictable, there are several moments that are very comedic. Though, some of it can be a little mature for today's young crowd. However, a few of the most memorable scenes in this movie is the part where Tulio and Miguel follow the map to El Dorado, and the part where they play a ball game with several of El Dorado's best players. Also, I must point out that a few other parts feel pretty similar to Disney's Atlantis The Lost Empire, which was released a year later. Also, I'm surprised that this was the first animated movie since The Lion King, where Elton John and Tim Rice provided songs. And now let's move on to the characters and the voice actors. Let's start with our two main characters, Tulio and Miguel, voiced by Kevin Klein and Kenneth Branagh. These guys are a duo of con artists who like to gamble with dice, and after winning the map to El Dorado, they plan to find the city and take some of their gold. In my opinion, Tulio is a pretty smart, strategic planner, though he often becomes anxious and frantic, while Miguel is more relaxed and laid back. And I think he's a pretty good musician. Plus, Miguel becomes accustomed to the peaceful life in El Dorado and values the city's people as opposed to the gold, which kind of makes me think of John Smith from Disney's Pocahontas. Next we have Altivo, vocalized by Frank Welker. Altivo was once Cortez's war horse, but when Tulio and Miguel are locked up in the brig, they talk Altivo into getting the keys for them by offering him an apple. Now, as Mustang Prince, I find Altivo to be the most memorable character in the entire movie, and I think he makes a great friend character for Miguel and Tulio during their journey to El Dorado. Next up is Chell, voiced by Rosie Perez, who had a small appearance in Pitch Perfect 2 and recently got to be in Clifford the Big Red Dog. Chell is a beautiful Mesoamerican woman from El Dorado who discovers Tulio and Miguel's con and she decides to play along in hopes of helping them escape El Dorado. In my opinion, Chell is cunning and clever and she acts akin to the femme fatale. Also to note, she becomes Tulio's love interest. Next we come to an armadillo named Bebo. In my opinion, Bebo is an underrated animal character, mainly due to him not having too many scenes. Still, I think armadillos are cool animals. Also, I think the most memorable scene that Bebo is involved in is the game scene where he helps Miguel and Tulio win while being used as a ball. As for the other characters, we have Chief Edjo Tanabok, or Chief Tani for short, voiced by Edward James Olmos, who got to be in Selena, A Dog's Way Home, Pixar's Coco, Nausicaa of the Valley of the Wind, and Beverly Hills Chihuahua. Tanabok is the skeptical yet kind chief of El Dorado, who realize that Tulio and Miguel are not gods. But fortunately, he treats them with kindness and hospitality because of the good that they show to his people, which to me makes this character seem very big-hearted. Next we come to the El Dorado High Priest and the movie's main villain, Sekel Khan, voiced by Armand Assant. Now, I find this character to be a very power-hungry, sadistic, and bloodthirsty kind of character. And he's also scheming and manipulative and psychotic. Also, I think Sekel Khan 
is very charismatic and dignified in manner. Due to his position, he is obligated to perform sacrifices necessary during the age of the Jaguar, but he also sees it as a way to get rid of sinful humans. To me, his most villainous acts in this movie is the part where he kills his assistant and the part where he brings a gigantic jaguar statue to life in order to attack Miguel and Tulio. Another character to talk about is Hernando Cortez, voiced by the legendary Jim Cummings. This character is a Spanish conquistador who led an expedition that caused the fall of the Aztec Empire and brought large portions of what is now mainland Mexico under the rule of the King of Castile in the early 16th century. Cortez was part of the generation of Spanish explorers and conquistadors who began the first phase of the Spanish colonization of the Americans. To me, the movie's version of Cortez is a cold man who has no problem with punishing people. Plus, he's a no-nonsense kind of man and he does not suffer fools lightly. And now let's move on to my final words. Overall, The Road to El Dorado is not one of DreamWorks best animated films, but it is an underrated one. While the story is pretty cliched, the animation is fantastic, the main characters are pretty comical, the voice acting is good, and the songs by Elton John and Tim Rice are great to listen to. You may not like it as much as The Prince of Egypt or Spirit's Stallion of the Cimarron, but you should give this movie a watch, but not exactly all the time, though. As for my rating, I'll give it a 70% out of 100. Well, that's all for now. Be sure to join me for my next blog, Mustang Power. Oh, and happy Cinco de Mayo, folks.